Dr. Sage here. In this video, we're going to discuss the methods of culturing microorganisms. In particular, we're going to discuss the five I's. By the end of this video, you should be able to explain what the five I's mean and what each step entails. Okay, so what are the five I's? Just remember the five D's of dodgeball. Dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge. No. Not the five D's of dodgeball, the five I's represent five basic techniques to manipulate, grow, examine, and characterize microorganisms in the laboratory. They are inoculation, incubation, isolation, inspection, and identification. So first let's give some definitions. Okay. One is a culture that's a propagation of microorganisms with various media growth of microorganisms in or on a nutrient medium. So what is media or medium? That's a nutrient containing environment in which microbes can multiply. I have a separate video entirely devoted to discussing what are the media involved in microbiology. Make sure you also watch that video. Sterile means free of all life forms, including spores and viruses. And it's a requirement for any instrument used for sampling and inoculation. So the first I, inoculation. That's introduction of microbes into or upon media for culture. Second I is incubation. The usual temperatures used for incubation in a lab are between 20 and 45 degrees Celsius. Incubators can also control atmospheric gases such as oxygen and carbon dioxide. Through incubation, you can note microbial growth in a liquid medium by a cloudiness, sediment, scum, or color. For example, this test tube sample at the top doesn't have any growth in it. You can detect that by it being clear of cloudiness. Whereas this one at the bottom has microbial growth in it and you can see a cloudiness to it. You can also detect through incubation microbial growth on solid medium. Colonies are visible masses of piled up cells. For example, this is a bacterial colony right here on this Petri plate. So a colony is a discrete mound of cells formed on a solid nutrient surface. It consists of just one species and no other if it's formed from a single cell. So how do we obtain isolation? A small number of cells must be inoculated into a relatively large volume or expansive area of media selected to encourage growth. It's on a relatively firm surface, like a petri dish, and it uses inoculating tools such as an inoculating loop. There's several different ways to obtain isolation of bacterial colonies. One way is a streak plate method. So a small droplet of culture or a sample is spread across the surface of a medium with an inoculating loop. The pattern used to inoculate gradually thins out the sample and separates the cells in order to encourage the growth of discrete colonies. So for example, you first place a small droplet of a culture here on the plate and you spread it out. Okay. Then you'll flame the loop to kill off all the bacteria that are currently on it. After the loop is cooled, you then spread from that first spread. Then you flame the loop again to remove the living bacteria. And then you spread again, flame the loop again, and then you spread again. Okay, by doing this pattern, what happens is you're able to isolate individual colonies that form from a single cell. So that's a streak plate method of isolation. Other methods of isolation involve serial dilution. Serial dilution involves diluting a fixed volume of cells mixed with dilution solution using the previous dilution as an inoculum. The result is dilution of the original culture by an exponentially growing factor. So let's say we take a culture of cells. Okay, from that culture, we take one milliliter out from it. And we combine it with nine milliliters of a dilution solution. So what we've just done is diluted it by a factor of 10. Then you take one milliliter from that and add it to nine milliliters of a clean dilution solution. That dilutes it by an additional factor of 10. So you've diluted it by one to 100 so far. You do it again, and again it's a 10-fold dilution. You do it again, another 10-fold dilution. You do it again, and it's another 10-fold dilution. So what you're doing is you're serially diluting your cultures to get lower and lower concentrations of cells in the liquid media. Once you've done that, then you can either do the pore plate method, 
So the sample is diluted serially into cooled but still liquid agar tubes. Inoculated tubes are poured into sterile petri dishes and allowed to solidify. Diluted cells then have enough space to grow into separate colonies. Or you can use the spread plate method. So a small volume of sample is pipetted onto the surface of the plate. Okay, that small volume of sample comes from the serially diluted samples. And then a sterile spreading tool or hockey stick is used to spread the sample around evenly on the surface to form individual colonies. So some definitions, a pure culture it's a container of medium that contains only a single known species or type of microorganism. It's used most frequently for laboratory study. Anexic is free of other living things except the one being studied. And a subculture is a second level culture from a well isolated colony. A mixed culture is a container that holds two or more identified and easily differentiated species of microorganisms. Whereas a contaminated culture is a culture that was once pure or mixed that now contains contaminants or unwanted microbes of uncertain identity. The last two eyes are inspection and identification. Microbial profiles are determined through combining phenotypic testing, genotypic testing, immunological testing, macroscopic analysis, and microscopic analysis. As examples, biochemical tests can determine fundamental chemical characteristics such as nutrient requirements, products given off during growth, presence of enzymes, or mechanisms for driving energy. Other analytical and diagnostic tools are genotypic testing. This detects microbes based upon their DNA or immunologic testing, testing the isolate against known antibodies. So in this video, we went over a brief introduction to the five eyes of microbiology which are inoculation, incubation, isolation, inspection, and identification. Until next time, this has been Dr. Sage.